What is good guys? Before we start this episode, I have a very, very special announcement. We will be having a live meet and greet in July, which I'm very, very excited about guys. It's gonna be so much fun. We are gonna have panelists. We are gonna have drinks. We've got cuts, cocktails. We've got all the good stuff. So guys, I am gonna leave a link in the description bra. I need you guys to sign up with your email and your details for you to get the latest tea on all the new events and all the new merch that's coming out but with that being said i hope you guys enjoy the motherfucking episode and it's gonna be a good one so make sure you grab your drinky poo and let's get it cracking ow it's cnt baby I think I'm, pol- I'm polite all the time. I like to be polite. It's important. Yeah, but I don't like rude people. I can't stand rude people. I f- do you know what? It, do you know what pisses me off when people are rude to like people that do customer service and that. Mm. I, I hate that stuff as well. That sense of entitlement that you should just know what I want and you should sort everything out. And these times, all I do is work in customer service. I have a fucking clue about the shop. I was working customer service. And the way they act like you're the, like you're the CEO of the of the company, like, girl, I am just here on a minimum wage. Child. Minimum wage! Have you ever had any job outside of entertainment prior? So I used to work in a shoe shop for a year and a half. This is back in the day. When okay. I was like 17. What shoe shop? I just don't even exist no more. I swear down, it's called Shelly's. Shelly's. Shelly Shoe Shop. It's in Covent Garden. It's a Nike store now. Okay. Like a, you got there. So you come out the station. There's a pathway that takes you down. You come out the station. You mm-hmm. cross the road. You do a left where the glasses hut is, I think. And you go straight down to so on your right hand side in the corner. Mm-hmm. I used to work in there, man. I was terrible. A shoe shop? Yeah, it was terrible. Why was it terrible? For me, because I don't like taking orders. I hear it. I hated it. So I didn't mind when people came in and said to me, can I have this size or that size? But like our superiors, if they can be called that, like your boss <laughs> and all that. It's just jarring people. I could tell like they just had missionary sex. I could tell that they didn't really have a good time at home. Oh, God. I could tell that, you know what I'm saying? Their missus probably wore the jeans, trousers. And there was got, yeah man they should take it out on me Why? I was in the out, funny enough my manager used to get ran by the women in my because I used to work at Tesco he used to get is ran, it the girl them ran him because I think he was having an affair with somebody from the store no he wasn't he was little slag. no he wasn't he was he was he was having an affair and um, I, f- I, his, I think his wife found out. His wife found out he had, had an affair. So she had tight reins on him, on his money, everything. So he used to come to work and try to do the manager thing. And the girls are like, you need to sit down. You need After to you sit can't down. even do this in After your household. You <laughs> your bark side. After you I'm, slag. Yes, uh, girls, I don't, know who, I don't know who you are. But yeah, Jay's friends, yes. <laughs> no, they were Stick my friend. Those fucking bitches, they were my friend. Fuck oh, them. What I, did they do? I quit that place. Why? Because they were those are the ones that were bullying me. They were all these old all these old women. You like your people. What do you mean? My people. Your people. Don't tell don't talk about Jamaicans like that. No, not even not Jamaicans. Light skin? No. What? What's my people? Pot cotton. Smokers. <laughs> They're not my people. <laughs> they were just like uh, Everyone's my people. But I love on. that. I love that. I had somewhere when I was watching you that you used to work a lot with uh you did youth work. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? When we're talking about youth work, what age range are we talking about here? I done youth work from 15 to 25. So you as a youth yeah, was a youth worker. Lit. Please explain to me how you got that job. So when Please I was Please explain 14, to me how they allowed you to have that job because I can't proceed, sorry. <laughs> well, I have you know. I'm a very responsible <laughs> individual, me. Now, when I was there, I remember like, saying can I help out because they were struggling like I could see that they needed help with just like maybe little things with the equipment and talking to people on the estate when they were in the massive football pitch so I lived on Ferry Lane there was this massive football pitch every summer people came there to do various different activities and there was just one member of staff called Barth that's it his name was Barth big man his name was Barth Mr. Barther and his favourite thing to say was use it so he would like he was coach football. He had no football qualifications. But this is back in the day. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> so he would like pick the team and then you see him on the side and I'm like, use it, use it. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. What else are we going to do? Um, but I just said to him, look, let me help you out. Like, I'm only 15 years old, but I've got loads of responsibility in my household. I've got time. I'll just come here after school. So I used to help out. And then from helping out, I just worked more intensely. Then I started getting paid when I was 17. Um, yeah. And then I just done work from 17 to 25 just doing youth work. How much were you paid? Very intrusive. Um, I, I wasn't getting paid like if I worked in a normal job. I was getting paid much more than that. So 
Oh, much more than that. Yeah. Okay, that's what's because me. I'm like at 17, I was getting paid like. I used to work at River Island. I was getting paid like maybe four pound twenty an hour. Yeah, I wasn't nearly on that. My friends were drug dealers, so they used to make loads of money. So <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm not on that. So I worked like youth work, done part time work uh, in the shoe shop, went to university, and yeah, and DJ to my dad. Like, yeah, I just done like, done work for my dad. Done, no, you just was a hustler. I was Do you always know what? doing I, I love yeah. me a hustler. You know, I feel like yeah. nowadays this mm-hmm. generation, I feel like they have more of like a get things quick everyone wants to get things quick but they don't want to work for it okay in my in my honest opinion so it's nice to hear like obviously i know where you're coming from mm. like everything is like sh- striver struggle and striver struggle but we gotta keep going man like i hear it everything takes time and like everything takes time i always say to people like imagine you think of a dope idea at like 24 mm-hmm. it took 24 years of your life for you to think of that idea so <laughs> for you now true. to think it's just gonna work like that in 24 minutes is a bit like uh, should give it as a little bit more time for it to marinate and get to where it needs to be mm-hmm. and then you're good man everyone's impatient though i get it I listen it i'm a very listen not gonna lie i'm a very impatient woman why just, i think generally like do you know what it is i can't even, i don't know what it is it might be my adhd it might be the fact that i just don't like to wait for things i want it now like we come, I mean, but we come from. I mean, look at the generation I'm coming with. Gone. Like we got Uber Eats, we got next day delivery. We got. We didn't have to wait for shit. We got everything is in a click of a finger. Everything is that mm. today. Amazon one day click is coming today if you need it today. Do you know what I mean? So I guess that's that's just. I'm just not used to slow processes. I like things. <laughs> Oh god, I nearly dropped that. That would be funny. Look at me as the fuck. Drink, please. Thank God it's closed. I like things. Bo, 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 quickly. Bo. Yeah. But then, like, things that come quick leave quick, and things that take long to come end up staying for a longer period of time, and you appreciate it more. So, if it's like your career or your life, mm-hmm. I'd rather it take a long time so it can stay with me for a long time rather than if it's like a one night stand. They don't usually stay too long in my life. Like, I have a one night stand, I might text you the next day, and then we just carry on with our lives, innit? Mm-hmm. I don't want a one night stand in my work. I'd like to have a good relationship with my work. And hopefully get married to it one day. If you want a one night stand of your So work, now we've yeah. got philosophical poet in the yes. building. <laughs> we might venture to physical poet. It's like running into walls and stuff. Oh, running into what walls? Oh, there's not really much walls to run in here. I wanted to ask you, obviously uh-huh. it's bank holiday weekend for everyone that is not from Amer- not from England. So we've got the Jubilee weekend. Are you doing anything exciting to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee? I don't care about the Queen, so no. Just so you just so outward with it, like yeah. Just so why do you care about the Queen? Because she doesn't want black people to work in her house. This is a fact. She, Meghan Markle, and so on and so forth, mm-hmm, they're true. not involved in the house. She raised children, and one of her children happens to be a paedophile. Um, I just think to myself, do you know what, darling? I'm sure you're a wonderful woman to someone, but just not for me. I would like to say allegedly to all of this you know I got it you know somebody, no some no. of these things are real so no like, no do you know what do you know what it is somebody mm. Buckingham Palace ban ethnic minorities from officer roles papers reveal so that's that a fact crazy uh, I mean if I get sued by Prince Andrew for saying he's a bit of a kiddie fiddler I mean I don't think you'd want to take this to court mate <laughs> <laughs> allegedly allegedly you know yeah no, honestly the reason why Listen, I'm so with you on that. Yeah. You know, one of my videos got taken down because of defamation of character. Has mm-hmm. that ever ever happened to you? Nah. What one did you of say? one of my videos. Well, I was talking about Andrew. No, I was talking about someone else on the show. Well, there you go. You should speak about Andrew because Andrew can't even go to Wimbledon anymore. That's how much he hates court. Like, there's no way you're gonna catch him in any type of court. So, hi, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> but no, apart from that, I know there's loads of parties going on. I know there's everyone's having a good time. So, what did you say? You don't want to say it now to get taken down again. All right. What, was, what did I say? Who's so it about? Okay, I will, I, will, I will mouth it to you. No, you got to say the name so I can't hear you. I c- okay, do you want me to say it? If you just say the name and not what they've done, then there's nothing to worry about. What okay, you- Tim Westwood. You got taken down? Got taken down. I say stuff about this guy all the time. It got taken down. Defamation of character. Did you, have like a, did you say like a long thing about him or was it just like a... Obviously, we've got hot topics here. So we had a conversation about Tim Westwood. Is it? Yeah. And I got an email from who? From YouTube saying we've taken down this particular video because there has been a, a complaint about defamation of character. Do you know what, yeah, Jay? 
I love a little lie. I love a bit of speculation. I love, like, I laugh. Yeah. You know when things are serious and you mm-hmm. don't tell the truth? Mm-hmm. I think you're a pussy. Facts. I don't think if you can't tell the truth about something that we need to tell the truth about to move forward, especially when, it, when it's about the black community, especially when it, it affects the black community 100%. But I said what a motherfucker That's said yeah. and they took it and they took that shit down. But you Ugh. know what? Suck your mum. This is what, what I'll I have say. to say. Like, <laughs> if Westwood didn't do it, then I apologise. Take everything back I said. I was totally in, you know, wrong. I should yeah. never have done that. Uh-huh. But if Westwood did do what the things, if he is guilty, mm-hmm. He's profited of the black community for quite some time. Yeah. I believe that we can say as we please if we know that we've been conned. I'm not exactly. saying he hasn't given people opportunities, but we're not going to have the tall, big seven, six or seven white man come in here and he can say, do what he wants because he's giving black people opportunities. Like, no one's that, des- that desperate. Like, no one's hundred percent. And I'm glad people like you, people like me are, are speaking out about it. And if you don't like it, then go to hell. But I do want to talk about this though. What? Like, yeah, if yeah, I, I saw Tim tomorrow, I'd say, what's going on, Keith? What happened? I'll talk to him about it. Give him the opportunity. I mean, everyone has the opportunity, but at the end of the day, when when the evidence is the evidence, what can you really say? Like, Nothing. <laughs> what, can you, what can you really say? But I, I do want to ask Sam. you because I, I believe I mm. saw something on socials Go on. where you guys had a had a party. What's that? I, I believe um half a uh, HC podcast and Benj Arts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So are basically, having a coalition. We are. We're doing Talk a collab. Yeah, so Benjart, the beautiful people at Benjart, God bless them, man. They've done so, so well. And we're in one of their tops now. I love that. Because we just got a collaboration uh, with them for 10 eps. And we had a nice dinner in Lovely. Storks, yeah. in Mayfair, to celebrate. Classy, bougie. Come on. It was a Nigerian restaurant, from my understanding. Yes. The food was sensational. What did you think so of Nigerian nice. foods? Oh, Nigerian food's banging. Come you on. love it. Ghanaian food. I used to go to Ecobanks when I was younger, so... That's Tottenham High Road, for those who don't know. Per. <laughs> Come on, cuz. I'm really out here eating um, everything. So, nah, man. It was such a good... It's a good opportunity to get. It's nice to know it's a member of the community. Mm-hmm. It's nice to know people within the community uh, progress, do great things, and don't forget about individuals within the community. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's what's important about aligning yourself with people that are integral to the community rather than aligning yourself with people that are popular within the community. Because the most popular guy in my school got beat up and then he wasn't popular no more. <laughs> So who gives a shit about popularity? I just care about who you are. Do you know what? I really fuck with you because I remember I was watching um, Wumi Bella's interview with you and you mm. seemed so passionate about the black community and yeah. putting back into your community and being a part of and building the black community. And you're like, do you know what? Fuck everyone else. Yeah. Fuck everyone else outside the black community. I want the blacks to win. Yeah. And everyone outside that, it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I had nothing against it against anybody outside of that but i just always looked at it like because we're like the minority man and mm-hmm. like and i take a look at how much of what we do gets taken by other cultures mm-hmm. and exploited and people profit and from it and, yeah. make mon- and make money off it and mm-hmm. it's not like anyone does it and goes back to the founding fathers and says thank you for creating this opportunity which has allowed us to do all of that they just shit on them like mm-hmm. you take a look at music in this country for example so many different genres of music have uh, profited off grime and yeah done so much from grime but no one gives a shit no one gives a damn they won't they don't care and i'm just like if we're doing that to our own people like that's the reasons why things are a mess like if you don't take care of your own what are you taking care of so i just think it's really important to always think hmm how have i got this job opportunity because of this person here thank you d-double thank you kano thank you gets thank you lethal b thank you bruiser thank you like all of these guys that are important do you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying so um yeah I, I think it's important to give back to your community I love that. And if you were, this is a very, this is a trick question, yeah, but think about it. Obviously, we've got the Queen of England here who is the representative of Britain. She's trash. But go on. Who would you say in the black community, if you were to give the the king and queen of the black community in terms of their influence, their contribution to the community, king and queen in the UK, who would you give it to? Wow. Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a good one, isn't it? My king's Tim Westwood. <laughs> you know you're wrong for that. I'm playing Tim, man. I, just, I don't take nothing I say serious. I take everything I say serious. Um, no. Um, wow, that's a difficult question, man. When it comes to an individual that has... I can only talk about the people that influence me the most then. Yeah, of course. So in the UK, you're yeah. saying? In the UK, king or queen. So my queen of a woman that influenced me heavily, and I'm sure there was people before her and I'm sure there's people after her, but for me personally, is Miss Dynamite. She was a massive influence for me. Amazing. She was like a, an older cousin or that I didn't have that I knew. And I was just hearing her in FIFA, like hearing Miss Dynamite. Tee-hee. Yes. In FIFA, like 
was mind blowing to me. She's mm-hmm. always been, and I remember when I interviewed her, it was probably one of my worst interviews because I was so she doesn't I was so shy like I was like overwhelmed to, to talk to her because she's she's like she's amazing she's to me. Girl, yeah. She's amazing for me, man. The mm-hmm. things that she spoke about and just how she you know she reacted to things in her just even the fact that she just wore an Adidas tracksuit in her first video like. You're talking about an industry that sexualizes women all the time. Yeah. And she just kept it so normal. And it was just like, it was so lit, man. I was, I thought she was incredible. And then as a guy, like, as much as I may not play him as much as I, like my two favorite people in grime of all time are Getz and um, Skep. Like those are my favorite guys, but mm-hmm. I'm going to say Kano because- Kano? Okay. He's the, the the king for me because, and this is just for me, like, and it's so centered that someone could argue and say no. Or, it's just that he came in a genre of music which is extremely aggressive. He had to find the compromise of aggression and being cool. I think not only did he do it so well, like he's still relevant today. Like you still know Kano today, whether it's him playing a role in Top Boy or him making music, you're still aware of his, you know, his contributions today. And there's not a lot of people that can say in this industry they've been around since the late 90s early, early millennials and still around today that's like almost two decades in the game and um i have the utmost respect for kano and if i can have half the careers i'd have had a good career so those are my kings and queens anyway. i love that do you know what that do you know what? that is a very good choice yeah, that's right especially man. kano i feel like i love longevity i yeah. feel like uh, there's so many people um within your era within my era that have that have had amazing starts to their careers but they don't have the time span they don't have listen like in every generation they have held something important so i think those are very very good choices but of course without further ado i would love to introduce you i haven't introduced you oh shit i haven't introduced you i have someone so so special here honestly i'm so honored that you are here oh thanks a privilege man um yeah i'm a bit shy Madame <laughs> Jay. <laughs> no, Jane. honestly, I'm so excited that you're here. Like, seriously, I think um, I'm always like when I when I am able to get people on the show that I'm really, really inspired by. Yeah. I'm always a bit, just a little bit more overwhelmed than than the usual one. Don't I know I can't. I know it's the makeup. It's holding it together. You nah, you're yourself. gorgeous. Don't be silly. You're a gorgeous ah! girl. Thank you so Very much. Gorgeous. I appreciate you. But of course, we have a entertainer. We have a musician, a podcaster, a UK legend. Oh, thank you so much. That means bear to me, bro. This is none other than poet. Thank you, Mr. Gang. Poet. What one? Pot cutting. Pot cutting, fam. Polite poet. Polite poet. Philanthropy poet. Political poet. Political poet. Come on. I, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. First of all, how you find the drinks? Talk to me. We got some cocktails in the mix, of course. And, and you've been sipping. You're nearly you're you're down one already. Do you know what it is? Yeah, like mm-hmm. I, I tasted all of them. I was like, oh, that's my favorite one. That's my favorite. Now I'm just you just alternating. This you is just, sensational, bro. It's sensational. Of course, you want to thank Kurt's cocktails on the mix every fucking time. Control always comes, and and not only does it look good, taste good. Everyone is fucked by the end of the episode. So I keep saying, sip it light, sip it light. It will catch you. It tastes yeah. good, but it will catch you. It does, bro. It will catch you. you. Yeah. It does. <laughs> It does. <laughs> One minute, because it tastes so sweet, it's like a juice juice. It's and like then, a juice juice. And then two twos now, you're out here just rolling on the floor. You're like, this ain't a juice juice. This is crazy. Listen, I don't want to have to carry anyone out of this place. Mm. So sip slow. But yeah, make sure you guys check out Control in the description box. She's got all her shit there. But how has your week been? Talk to me. So this week, um, interesting, uh, MTV. I had MTV. So I have MTV with the wonderful Snoochy Shy every I fortnight. Uh, today, who did we have as a guest? Did we even have a guest? We did. We had Nux. So Nux was even there I as a guest. That. So that was so amazing. amazing. Nux was um, an amazing artist um, coming from the UK. I found out one of the artists that he's working with as well. I wish I could say it, but Jesus Christ, man. I'm so gassed. Just sn- sn- to me. Big man, for me to ruin the relationship with Nux and the... Fa- Just whisper. Just whisper. Off air, off air. Okay, I got off you. Off air, I got you. Come on, cuz. Um, and then obviously I had a podcast with Chucky. We released a Feel for Fe- Filthy Fella jersey. Uh, I saw that. Sick, bro. Amazing. Oh, I got to get you one. So that was. I um, mean, black and white is definitely my color. Come on, Foot Locker thing. Come on. Oh, is it in Foot Locker? Nah, it's just the style of it. Is Foot it? Locker. No, it looks good. It looks, it looks really, good. really good. Thank you, man. So we've done um, an episode of Billy, uh, Billy the Goat, another incredible podcaster from um, Oldham. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Yeah, 17, 18 years old. I think he's going to be in the game a uh, long time, just like yourself. I think it'll be six. So we had him on the show as well. Yeah, man. All my weeks are involved in making content, looking for some dope new talent, thinking of some creative ideas. Do you know yeah, what? It's man. so interesting because you've come from a background of music and you also have come back, come from a background of football. Mm. So how have you 
found that your job incorporates all the things that you really enjoy because I know if yeah. I'm not mistaken you are Tottenham Spurs supporter Arsenal Arsenal yeah you know what you need to you need to help me Go because on. I was watching your Poets Corners sensational and you were really repping the Tottenham Spurs top it's because so basically yeah when I used to watch like my favourite shows were like South Park and mm-hmm. like The Simpsons and like cartoons really had me but one thing I'd noticed about cartoons they had a uniform and they wore it every single time and of if you course. saw that person without their uniform you almost didn't recognise them so I was like if I want to take this job seriously I need a uniform and I worked for Tottenham Hotspur slash Haringey Council as a youth worker so they can they can like join together and then you have to wear the Tottenham Hotspur mm-hmm. uh, uniform so I thought I'm an Arsenal fan wearing a Tottenham Hotspur that is sick like <laughs> people talk about it in my area and as a uniform I don't have to worry about getting any other clothes and so on and so forth. I can always just go to the ground. They'll give me a uniform. If I wear it in my videos and then people see me on the street, they will recognize the videos and go, that's the guy. So I was like, I don't want, I want job opportunities from this, isn't it? So this is my uniform. This is what I'm going to wear. I don't need to wear anything else. Like, like Superman just wears his outfit. Spider-Man just wears his outfit. Mm-hmm. The X-Men just wear their outfit. So I thought, I'm just going to wear my outfit. So um, I used my working outfit to be on Poets Corner and... Um, yeah, even people used to come down to our workplace because they'd seen the videos. That's crazy. So, like, it was, yeah, it was a, a crazy idea in my head, but it just seemed to make sense. And it was, it definitely was an interesting, interesting watch, which I will talk about later. But, of course, I want to mm. play a game with you, and it is called Win or Bin. Go true. So, the name of the game, I'm going to mention some topics, and you're going to tell me whether it's a win or a bin and mm. why. Simple as. Dope. I really like you, Najee. You like me? Yeah, you're a good person, man. You're lit. You is that sure that's not the drinks talking? Nah, do you know what? I just thought about it. Obviously, we first met properly mm-hmm. at um the podcast with uh, Henry and Harry. Yeah, your energy is A1, bro. Like, it's proper sick. So, like, you make people comfortable. So, like, yes, yeah, I love that. Can I just say you're very charming? I'm sure a lot of people tell you that you I are the know. most, you're one of the most charming people I've met. Serious, yeah, God bless so you. charming. Look at us exchanging love, anyways. Let's play. We're not been so. Are you ready? Go on. Topic number one. Raising children in big cities. So, raising children in, in London. Oh, wow. I think it's a win. Why? For the simple fact that it's a, a city is a very intriguing place. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot more for you to sort of get your head around in a city than there is in a quiet town. So, okay. once you're able to get your head around what's happening in the city, taking you to a strip back place where it's a little bit more quiet, it's, a more, it's an easier uh, task for myself anyway. Mm-hmm. So, I would prefer to show you the complications of life and then show you how simple life can be afterwards once you've clocked the complications. Okay. I don't know. I I agree what you're saying. Um, Obviously, I grew up in London. I grew up in North London. Oh, you grew up from my end, go on. Uh, Frinsby Park. Aye, aye. And then I moved outside, so I moved to Bedford. So my my mum moved to the the, the outside, outside. So I went went uni there. You went to uni there? Yeah. Look at us, aligned. Come on. So yeah, and um, I definitely saw a difference in in how I I was and how I lived outside London as opposed to London. Mm -hmm. I feel like London makes me quite nervous, especially for kids in terms of certain areas that don't really, how do I even say this? Because I haven't got no kids, but don't really like, they don't really nurture children in the way that I I would like to nurture my children. Like I'm talking about the, the community as a whole, like in terms of the violence, in terms of, um, the education system here in London, I'm not really, I'm not really for it. If I'm being honest, in England, the problem with moving outside of England, moving outside of London, for me, mm-hmm. is some of the places outside of London. There'll be more places outside of London than in London that understand my culture or True. have an understanding of my culture. True. So if I have to move outside of London, I got to water down my culture and water mm-hmm. down who I am. Unless I move to like Birmingham, this is bare Jamaican, shout out Birmingham. Yeah. But I would have to water down who I am in order for me to sort of become a little bit more English. And you notice mm-hmm. that about people outside of London, apart from like people from Manny, and I would say Birmingham, mm-hmm. more time, if they're from outside of London, they're more English than the other culture that they're from. Yeah. And I would prefer to be more Jamaican than more English. I'd prefer to be more Jamaican, Ghanaian, Nigerian. I prefer to be more that than English yeah just because the principles of be, that, sorry to make it black and white but I'm more, I'd rather be more black than white yeah, because yeah. I don't want to I don't have a problem with white people They're just lit but like I'm proud of who I am so yeah. I'm happy so I think I'd rather grow up in a place which has a lot more culture so definitely my children I feel there, like that's a big issue as well like what, what mm. you're saying uh, the outside communities and 
not being not harvesting the culture that we've come from yeah. you find that you have people who are black but don't know anything about where they're from exactly they don't know like obviously me i'm, I'm a nigerian woman first generation here i yeah. speak uh, well <laughs> i try to speak my home language obviously, at least I you speak try yoruba. bro like, I, under, I understand fluently but you have people who are yoruba like me that don't speak the language don't understand the language the only language i know is english they don't know how to cook the traditional food they don't know how bro. to like they don't even know how to give the leg work at the parties give you know they don't know none of that do you know what i mean and i feel like that's really sad because i said i, I said to my friend i said I don't speak Yoruba. If I have, a, and, I, and I would love my children to at least understand Yoruba. If I meet somebody who does not speak Yoruba, the language in my language is dead. That my, 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 unless my children go out of their way to learn the language, yeah. that part of my culture that has been inherited for me for years dies. And I think that's the scary thing with living in, in these type of countries because it's like, these type of, countries make you feel like this is what this is all you need yeah. english is all you need yeah understanding how white people are is what you need yeah but then the rest of us the rest of the culture dies the, the rest of the languages die and i feel like i it's 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 a scary thing because i don't want that i'm very much for cultural preservation i just look at like this whole country right now is celebrating the queen mm -hmm. This is a woman that's openly stated. This is not an alleged. This is a fact. She doesn't want coloured people in her house. That means I couldn't go to her house and get a job in a particular field. Why do I want to be a part of this? I'm in a country where the Queen's son can findle with under 16s and nothing happens with it. Like no one can't say anything. Yeah. He can findle with an 11 year old on a private island and come back and still. This is not. F what's going on? Like, yeah. What's going on? We're in a in a country where Princess Diana dies, but. She's got a boyfriend called Mohammed. Yeah, the Asian like, man, yeah. This is all a bit weird, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to be a part of this. Yeah. I'd rather just be a part of Jamaica. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even that's confusing to me because we've yeah. got a place called Spanish Town, but no Spanish people are there. And there's an area yeah. called Manchester and no one's been Manchester. So I just think I don't want to be a part of a culture which is just, when I look at their history, it's based upon conquering, killing, all of that. Yeah. I'd rather like my my history is Your quite nice them. yeah so I'd rather learn as much as I can about that and in in blood myself in that because one day I'm going to be back to Jamaica anyway and I want to be a part of my Jamaican community I want to be have you ever looked part. at your heritage like you know when people do those like DNA tests and stuff um no because the thing is with Jamaican families yeah like a lot of them will be able to tell you just some of the things like for example I know I've got German uh, in me and I know I've got Indian in me and I know my great great granddad is a rapist like this is what I know <laughs> because yeah that's what I'm saying not a rapist shout yeah so like I've never done it because I found out that much information it was too much for me I said Craig David 2002 I'm walking away this yeah, is crazy <laughs> man <laughs> this is crazy yo so we are saying but um, for the question we are saying um, raising kids in big cities you're saying win 100% bro honestly I'm saying bin you know I'm saying bin I'm saying bin I, I hear what you're saying about cultural preservation but in terms of what children are exposed to in communities i'm i'm nervous i'm not gonna lie to you i think having all of that information from an early age and then living elsewhere afterwards i think you need the information and yeah. the best thing is for you to live through it like learning french in england doesn't make sense learning french in france that makes perfect sense because you can Agreed. learn it and practice it so learning about the complications in life which are always going to exist the easy things are easy to go through get in the thick of it don't be afraid put yourself amongst it because once you've learned it you know it but that sort of i don't want to learn it there's always going to be that sort of, oh, when do I start? When do I start? You're going to have to learn eventually. Into the thick of it. But Into yeah, man. The sorry, <laughs> sorry, man. You're... No, that's cool. Okay, cool. We're going to move on. We got win or bin. Men paying for women's beauty maintenance. Win or bin. Shit. I'm just going to say bin because in more cases it's bin than it is win. Why? Like I would do it. But I have a job that allows me to make enough money for me to just say, yeah, I swear, I don't really care. Because it's not going to be something that will bother me at the end of the month. But if it's a priority to a girl and the guy don't have the fucking finances, but he does everything else, it's like, you're just rubbing yourself out. Because you're going to find a guy that can pay for that, but also pay for seven other girls to do it as well. And then you're like, oh, you're just part of a rotor. Like, your name's Saturday. You don't care if you think <laughs> your name's Rochelle. Your name is Saturday. <laughs> You'll see you on Saturday. We'll sort it out on Saturday. Like, if you want to be a part of a fucking conveyor belt, go ahead, man. But you can be a priority. I think it's I think it's the question comes more from from a set standard. Of course a lot of guys don't like you're you're dating a woman, mm -hmm. you're you're with a woman and 
she wants an allowance every month. No, no. Because no. if my daughter does that, we're going to have a lot of issues. If my daughter comes to me saying my husband hasn't given me my allowance. Not allowance, but obviously a certain amount of the month, babe. No. No? I, my daughter needs to be an independent woman that can stand on her own too. She don't need no man. I need my daughter to be Destiny's Child, 2002, independent woman. Tell me what you think about me. I got my own and I got my own. I need <laughs> that. I don't need 1998 Destiny's Child saying, can you pay my bills? No. <laughs> I don't want that. I want my daughter to stand on her own too. I don't feel like the question is whether a woman is independent or not. I think it's whether if a man could provide for her in that instance. Like, for example... No, but you, you seem like a man should provide. And I'm saying a man... That pressure exists if the woman doesn't have. If the woman has, the pressure shouldn't the pressure exist. The pressure shouldn't exist. But for the women that... The women who are independent... I and love who them. Do, and who have their own money, but will still... Because here's the thing with me, right? This, this, yeah. this is where... I, I'm 24 years old, Yeah. yeah? I make more money than most 24 year, years old. Let, let's talk, do, do, do you know what I'm talk saying? Talk your shit! Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm God has put me in a place where I'm good. I can provide for myself. I live on my own. I can get, I can get shit done. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? You, you got a beautiful face. I love your style today. Your outfit choice is it's incredible. For you. I this for you. Did you? Yeah, look, did. Your hair is on point. I'm taking Thank a look you. at the cut. Yo, anyway, carry on. Thank you. Focus. Yeah, so it's a thing where, for me... Anything outside of myself mm. needs to be an addition to me. I'm not the type of woman that will go after a man because I want him to pay for my shit because I can pay for my own shit. Mm. But then, if you can't add to my life, then why are you here? But adding doesn't have to be something uh, visible. I think for me, I don't think that, for me, again, monetary, people are just thinking about it, about the monetary thing. But for me, I'm thinking about the psychology of, do you care enough to look after me? Do you care enough to to want to make me happy in, in any aspect. That's that's where I'm coming from. So let me show you um, examples of how, about how I care about my uh, a female that I'm seeing. Okay. Um, so the mother of my kids, for example, mm -hmm. when she told me she wanted to move back to Sweden and um, I didn't have the opportunity to wake up to my kids every single day, I would travel to Sweden nearly every single weekend and I would make sure she had that space from the children. I would pay for her to go on holiday and I would take the kids that's beautiful I would ask her what it is that she wants to do and I'd want to invest the majority of my money into something that she could pick up as a practice later on in life and actually make as a career rather than luxuries of life I always said to her like these luxuries are not going anywhere but the older you get the more difficult it is to get the things that you want to do like mm -hmm. for the rest of your life so when it comes to caring about a female I care about knowing that if she walked out of this relationship she's left with more than she had when she came in. And I don't mean more money. I don't mean more possessions. I mean more knowledge. I mean yeah. more skills. I mean knowing that you're a better woman than you was when you walked in. And that has nothing to do with what I provided you as a financial gift. It's more what I provided you as financial freedom in the sense of in your mindset, like giving you the freedom of thought. Like I'll pay for that because it'll give you more freedom to figure out what you want to do for yourself rather than, I just don't want, I don't want, if you're my girlfriend, I don't want you to be pressured. I genuinely mm -hmm. don't want you to be pressured. I want you to just think about things that make you happy. But see, this is what I'm saying about the mindset as in not it's not to, it's not to do with the the finances itself, but the intention behind it. Cuz like you just said, you just said if you was with your girl, you would you want to in, invest into her company, you want her to be free. In another man's mind, that would be I'm putting money down. Why am I giving her money? She's supposed to be an independent, babe. Do you see what I'm saying here? Yeah, yeah. No, do you get what I'm saying? I wouldn't so, want to ask. I hear did you. Did you hear what I'm saying? So my yeah. thing is this the the, the, the the thing itself has nothing to do with the money. I, listen, yeah. I could pay for my own nails. I could put I, the hair on my head. I pay for the nails for myself. I pay for the toes is done. Do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, done. it's not about that. Shout it's to about them, Jay. it's about the action behind why you're doing those things. Do you care enough about me to be like, do you know what? Yeah, if my woman's appearance makes her happy, I want to invest towards that to make her happy. And it's it's exactly the same thing mm. you're saying. It's exact. But obviously, but it's you're not that though because I wouldn't. I don't. That's what my woman needs to understand. Like, I invest in my appearance because I'm telling you, bro, I have a deep love for myself. Per, I, as you should. I have a deep love for my. If no one else saw it, I wouldn't care. It's genuinely to do with me. Uh -huh. And if my the person I'm seeing feels that way as well, then I don't mind investing in her because I imagine that. But I just don't. But most think, women do. No. But most women do. No. That's what they will tell you. Jump in their DMs. They'll tell you something different. No. Like I talk to a lot of women that will say that, but they will be upset that I didn't notice that they changed something. And I'm saying to you, I genuinely will go and get a trim. I'll do loads of things. 
And if you didn't notice, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. I might ask you for the sake of it, but it's not something that I will hold in my heart. Hold in your heart. I've done it for me. Mm -hmm. If I'm not satisfied, I have a problem. I can ask your opinion, and if you tell me it looks good when it don't, then I can be like, what did you do that for? But apart from that, like I genuinely don't care. I don't feel that way about most women that I see anyway. I can't speak for all women, but a lot of women that I see, I don't feel like that. They're asking me because and they, they really, really care about is a strange they, opinion. Is it that they care about, and obviously I don't know I don't know your relationship with these women, but is it that they care about... Future. <laughs> Carry on. Is it that they care about strangers' opinion or they care about your opinion? Because I know as a woman, if there's someone that I like or that I fancy, yes, I'm very self-assured in myself, but I would love for a guy that, you know, I'm interested in to be like, yeah, you look good. Like, it's just that self... That's, it's just that affirmation, I guess. It's not really to do with how I feel about myself because I love myself, but not going to lie, I really like it when you tell me I look good. Do how you know about what I'm saying? both can be true? So, like, I could be a stranger that you want to hear information from. Mm hmm that's still a stranger. So like girls, there's girls that I'm seeing, if they don't think I look good, I don't care. I've known you for like a month. Imagine I've not known you longer than I've known you. Mm -hmm. So like, I always have to put things in context of life, not just how I feel, because yeah. how I feel changes too, it changes too frequently for me to be using it as a reliable source. It's yeah. not a reliable yeah. source. Like yeah. facts are always a reliable source because they mm -hmm. don't change. Feelings can never be a reliable source because they alternate due into yeah. how you feel. Absolutely. So I wouldn't really go with feelings. I'd rather go with facts. Cool. We're going to move on to the next win or bin. Wait, okay. before that, no, no. The last one. Are we saying paying for your beauty's maintenance? Paying for your women's beauty maintenance. You're saying bin. Yeah. Until I understand her reasoning for it. Okay, fuck it. I'm saying win all the way, child. You better pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> and the killer is I say bin, but every girl will be like, but you pay for everything for me. I'm like, shit. Do you know what? I know, you, I know you're the type. I yeah, know you're because the listen. Sometimes you have to you have to back the city boys in it publicly, but I know behind the scenes you're gonna pay for a couple things. Because I know what I'm doing is trash, but just me selfishly in the moment, I love making my girl happy. I love my girl being happy. I love her coming home and she's happy. She's happy. That makes me really, really happy knowing that she's happy. So I'm like, I love that. If I can contribute towards that happiness and try and help it by all means, like. So you're gonna pay for the nails? Just gonna be honest. Come, on, baby. <laughs> You don't, even need to be my you don't even need to be my girl, man. I swear to God. All these Listen, guys... I'm sending my cash out. No, I'm just Come on, baby. I'm sending I just need to be seeing you, and I can't lie, you're making me feel good. I'm like, fuck it, man. Let's go do what? With your nails what or you some mean? stuff? I don't give a shit, man. Like, that's <laughs> it. Let's go get some nice food. I want you to look good, man. I want. Oh, you want them shoes? Get the shoes, man. I don't give a shit. And here today, we have met Pounds Poet. <laughs> yeah. Hey, women deserve to be treated like queens. I'm sorry, man. I'm all up for that. I love that. Do you know what? More men like poet, you know. I love poet for the win. Man. I don't know what you were saying at the beginning, man. You should have started with this. <laughs> you should have started with this. I don't know what you said at the beginning. All right, now, honestly, I'm, I wouldn't want to use myself as an example, but yeah, I would spoil a woman. I don't care. I'll spoil all women. I don't care. All women. Why not, man? Like, they women are so lit. I don't get it. They're There's so not, lit. Honestly, one thing I love about, and seriously, like, poet is not even capping. Poet proper appreciates women. Like, every time I see him, like, literally, Control was here, mm. and he'll just go, Control, uh, the, the girl that makes the cocktails. And he was like, you're so beautiful, you know. You're so pretty. Like, you, honestly, you will feel like a special babe. Be careful. People like poet are dangerous, you know. They're just making you feel like, oh. They made me feel bad oh. because I will say complimentary things and nice things, but I may not speak to you again. But I've not done it to manipulate you. I just want you to know that you're special. Like, you are. You're a beautiful young lady. You're doing incredible things. Someone should at least tell you. Like, I don't understand why someone isn't telling you or no, why people... Like, Listen, I need to calm down, child. <laughs> Listen, honestly, you just, you just make... Well, that's how the girls are falling for you. Like, I was just like, yeah. even, even one time... Where was this? Spotify. Ra one honestly random beautiful woman, and you she, and then poet was like, "Hello, my name is Poet. Wow, you're beautiful." Poet is kissing her hand like they met, like they like they've been together for. <laughs> I'm just like, this boy is trouble. I'm not because I, I genuinely don't want. It. If you never spoke to me again, I would totally understand it. I, I have no problem with it. I just think that you should be told the truth, and if you are, you know, amazing beautiful young lady who's doing your thing and so on and so forth i don't know how many times you've been told today this year i would like to be one of the people that tell you though so if that's the last time i see you the next time you see me again your first thought of me is oh my god this guy paid me a compliment and told me how great i am so at least there's good energy you know what i'm saying i don't want no like bad vibes and shit oh, i'm swoon child i'm so swoon <laughs> <laughs> okay let's move on to the next win or bin Go. we have got win or bin mm. Feeding your guests. What? I put that. Someone comes to your house. 
randomly, random day, someone comes to your crib, hi poet, you're right, you're, you're making dinner. Do you feel obligated to feed that person? 100%. Why? You come to my house if I didn't feel like, and I was making food, so if I didn't feel like I could contribute in that capacity, I shouldn't have invited you around. I don't know. Like, I've, my mum, like, we always believe in, like, feeding your guests. Like, you've come around to visit me. I really appreciate that. It's so nice of you. And I enjoy your company, so there's not many ways in which I can repay you, but if I'm eating, uh, even if it was I only made food for one, I'll just half it and we can just both eat it. Do you know why this question is in, is in win or bin? Because I read something this week and I thought it was fucking crazy. Go on. Swedish people, when someone is coming to their house, they do not feed their guests. And do you know what? Yeah, it's true. Let it's me not tell you true, something. though. I swear down, statistically, it's true. I remember there was one black girl. My kids live in Sweden. Uh, you I've better got check the tons news. Tons of Swedish friends. You I better check the news. Swedish, Swedish, like Swedish, Swedish people. Something European people have a very selfish mentality. But yeah. when I go to Sweden, the people I'm gonna stick up for my Swedish people. Like shout let out me Sanna. let me just read this to this. So um, Swedish custom. Mm. Swedish families do not invite their children's visiting friends to eat with them at meal time. Instead, when it's time to eat, a child might go home, stay in the friend's room and play or sit at the table with the family and not eat. So traditionally, I imagine the Caucasian people in Sweden and they're Vikings and the Vikings just so people have some history. There's a, actually a film on it on Netflix or something. But the Vikings went down to the whole of Europe, killing a lot of people and taking the most pretty women and children and raping the beautiful women and that's the reasons why Scandinavia has a lot of good looking individuals so that's just the context of the history of those types of people as for the people that moved over to Sweden because like you know they just moved over there they're very accommodating very accommodating the mother of my kid the mother of my kids is mum is very accommodating last time I went around there she gave food for me um the, obviously the boy's uncle the friends like nah man like it's not totally true I think they just ask like a hundred Swedish people and then just come to a conclusion on what it is. That's bullshit, Funny man. enough, I know a Swedish person. There was a Ghanaian girl at school mm. and she was actually born in Sweden. Mm. And she grew up in Sweden. Mm. And I remember I came to her house because I just got my nipple pierced and Lit. I wanted to go and show her. Show her. I don't have it anymore, guys. But oh. this is when at school. I went to go show her. How old is you when you got your nipple pierced? God, I was like maybe 15, 16. You're on this. You was outside, bro. Fucking hell. Outside, child. God forgive me. I'm a Christian woman now. Thank you. <laughs> Is the hole still there? It's still there. It's both of them. I got two. I had two. You I had went back two. and went two. Yeah. I had two, not anymore. But the holes are still there. Anyways, I want to go and show her my nipple pierce because. dangerous. <laughs> I can't lie. Go on, Jay. Say no more. I went out uh, to her house and um, yeah, we were kicking it. And I remember that the mum bought a pizza, like a pizza and chips. And literally, she handed the children the pizza didn't offer me any wasn't offered any and I was like I was so confused because when you go to people's houses in the UK and obviously, obviously me being a black woman I only go to black people's houses because I had black friends Yeah, they would serve you food same thing if you came to my house my mum would be like is your friend trying to eat is your friend hungry so for me to go to that house and them not just eating pizza willy nilly they didn't ask me are you hungry they even they, they felt happy sitting chomping the food i was like barbaric so when this thing came up on the internet about swedish people that like they were they were showing a map of people most likely to share food um mm. when their children's friends come over versus people who aren't and usually most of the eastern european were like listen we ain't trying to feed anyone's family but i think it comes from i think there might have been some sort of recession or there was some sort of issue historically nah. that there was a shortage caucasians of are selfish man they just kidding <laughs> <laughs> just the just, old school just, caucasians are selfish individuals that just want to rule the world the new age individuals are understanding the, the you know the benefits in sharing so yeah. that's why i said to you I wouldn't want to move out of London for the simple fact that people have an old school mentality which derives from very westernized, racist, selfish attributes. And it's mm -hmm. like, if you go to the poorest family in Jamaica, if you go, to, if I took you to the village where my family's from right now, they'll offer you food, even if they don't have much, because it's like, man, if, if I'm with, babe, Jay, if me and you are somewhere, and it's just me and you, and I got 10 pound, my G, I got five pound. 
Wow. That's my mentality. Like that's just the way it is, and that's the way my family is, and a lot of individuals I know from that neck of the woods. But a lot of the individuals that I know that are from the European world, European world, and a lot of the black people that adopt adopt that European mindset is very. It's all about me. I need to get the bag. I don't care, boy. Man, just out here for myself. Like exactly. that type of mentality, and it's like, but that's not where you're from. You're not from that. Mm-hmm. You're from a mentality of a black family that moved over here, had no help from no one, had to stick together and work as a team in order to get through it. And now that your family's got you through it, you're just gonna work by yourself. That's just a Caucasian mentality from like 1952. Yeah, we want to say if anyone's from not from 1952, this doesn't apply to you in it. Like it might know. apply to you. <laughs> if you ever watched Titanic and felt like Jack deserved to die, this definitely applies to you. All this bitch had to do was move a little bit to the left, and Jack could have survived as well. No. After Jack was poor and working class, he also dies for the rich white woman as well. So that is uh, Titanic. Oh my God. Do you know what? Now you think about it, that's actually fucking true. That iceberg was pretty fucking big. That but was it? The bag was that big. piece of wood was big enough was for big. both of them to just hitch up like this, sir. But because Jack's the nice poor guy who hasn't been given much in life, he's just sort of like... Not sacrificing him like him life for the white woman, please. But okay, that was win or bin. So we're saying win. I'm saying win, guys. If you come to my house, if you come to my house, I'm going to feed you. Of course. I'm going to feed you. Listen, I'm not going to... I find it so... It's just rude. I don't know. It's just rude. Like, I can't believe that there are cultures that have that mentality. I just think it's weird. Yeah, but you them know? cultures that have the mentality that people can't dance, they have no rhythm... <laughs> They, have, they mo- the most sex positions they do in one night. I would say is missionary, doggy because they saw it in porn, and maybe they have like one unique position. Like their wives are bored. I'll tell you that. Do you know what I hear it? I mean, but do you know what? Let me tell you something. Mm. People that are not adventurous in sex can live with just doing missionary. God forbid, man. Not me personally, but God them lot there, they're happy. There's some people that are listen to this and like, what's wrong with having just missionary? Just staring in your girl's face with like fucking. That sounds like you have sex for all of two minutes. I don't know. I like variety. I like mixing it up. I like surprising my girl. I don't like when I feel like there's one position we're doing for too long and she's just too relaxed. No. Let's keep you stimulated. I want to see goosebumps, bro. Like, what the fuck? Come on, baby girl. <laughs> Right, we are going to move on. Obviously, I, I think that last conversa- conversation has got you very mentally stimulated because this next segment is a very mentally stimulated conversation. Okay. Well, it's not a conversation, but it's a questionnaire. Okay. So, are you? Are you? Have you got the the brain juice going? I hope so. Okay. So, this is our culture questionnaire in which we ask our co-hosts some questions about the culture. And we call this segment, Are You Smart? No. Poet, you're not smart. <laughs> no, man, I'll be the first to admit it. Do you know what? I think you are the first to admit it. Is or it? I might be the second. Nah. I, the thing is, intelligence is relative. So I'm smart That's to what true. I need to be smart to. And the things I'm ignorant to, hey, it's bliss, isn't it? Philosophy Poet is back. I like him. I like him. PP, baby. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you've got 10 questions. Go on. You have a short amount of time to answer. You can only give me one answer. You can't say Bobby, Ricky, Susie, Adam. Don't deliberate with me because I'll no take problem. the first answer. I don't like Bobby or Ricky. I don't like him either. Adam is cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So are you ready? Go true. Okay. Question number one. Which UK duo received a British Empire medal in 2020? Which brute? In 2020? Mm-hmm. Fuck knows, man. There's no way I'll know. No answer? None. All right, I'll go for Krebs and Sasha. Incorrect. The answer is Krebs and Conan. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) I was so close. (laughs) Why why would you you guess Krebs and Sasha for a British Empire medal? (laughs) Hey, Nala's doing that too. <laughs> that is an empire medal for me. But at least I was halfway there. I feel like I get 50% of No, it. you don't. Incorrect. Okay, the Rap Duo were awarded the British Empire Medal for their services to music and the community in Croydon. Okay, question number two. True or false? That's crazy, you know. I never even thought of Krypton Conan and Beeman. I just said Krypton and Sasha. But you That's thought crazy. of Krypton and Sasha. That's mad. My head's twisted, boy. <laughs> question number two. True or false, mm. sound travels faster in air 
than water? False. False? Yeah. Last, last answer? I guess so. If I'm wrong, it's cool. The answer is false. You are correct. Tra- yeah. Sound travels faster in water compared to air because air particles are packed in more densely. So you got a bit of science going on. No, I like I that. No, because of that. I just know because I watch loads of animal programs and I know dolphins are able to interact with each other quite from like different parts of the ocean quite easily. And I know that if you in Tottenham and I'm in Brixton, I can't contact you like unless I phone you and shit. These are niggas be cool? in water. Like that's lit. Are you cool? Question number three. <laughs> <laughs> British actor John Beagar first appeared on our screens in which sci-fi movie? Oh, Attack the Block. Attack the Block? Yeah. Final answer? I guess so. That is correct. Jeez. Attack uh, the Block 2011. Was Meghan Markle in that? I don't I don't think so. Why would she, she have been there? Meghan Markle was in a film with Skepta. Don't get it twisted. I mean, she could have been there in the background somewhere, child. I don't know. I don't know, but big up, big up John Boyga. Question number four. Mm. In the play Romeo and Juliet, what was Romeo's last name? Done. <laughs> <laughs> Two multiplied by ten plus one. Romeo done, my guy. I ain't got a clue, <laughs> man. <laughs> right, we've got done. That is incorrect. The answer is Romeo Montague. Oh my god, it was the Montagues. To be fair, it should have been done. Like, if they had any like <laughs> respect, it will be converted to done. Like that is amazing. <laughs> Two multiply by ten plus one. Romeo done. Are you mad? <laughs> hey Romeo, you're a fucking guy. And I know you have sex with Christina Milian. Like she's super lit. What the <laughs> fuck is going on? Right, question. And it's all gravy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so gone. Question number five. There's a lot of confidence for someone who's only got two points at the moment. Serious? Two points. Shit, it's Tom more than yesterday. Though. You better focus. Sorry. Question number five. Mm-hmm. Name three countries that border France. Um, so France is there. Belgium. Um, who else is there? France is there. Shit. Which border France? I'm definitely going to get this wrong. So it goes England, France is here, Belgium, Netherlands is there, Scandinavia is there, Italy is here. So I can say Spain and Germany. And I know I've got it wrong, but fuck it. Okay. So you are locking in Belgium, Germany and Spain. Yeah. Okay. You are correct. Lit. You are correct. So we've got on the north, we've got Belgium and Luxembourg. On the east, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and on the south, Spain and Andorra. Yeah, thought so. All right, you got a little bit of geography in the system, okay? Yeah, I travelled a lot, so. Okie dokie, I love that. Question number six: Which player with 653 games has made the most Premier League appearances? Shit, Ryan Giggs. You said that with confidence. I don't know. Then I can play from your 16. That is incorrect. Shit. The answer is Gareth Barry. Fuck! Gareth Barry played from 17 to 39. Yep. The record holder for the most Premier League appearances. Shit, I forgot. He started at Aston Villa and ended at West Brom. See, he didn't know. Fuck! He didn't know. It's okay. God will forgive you. But Ryan Giggs played from 16 to 39. And then he fucked his, um, his brother's girlfriend for 10 years. And then he also punched up his girlfriend and threw her for a window. Do you know what? Henry said something last week. She said, football just is very, very interesting. And I feel like that just confirmed it. 100% footballers are given so much respect because they have high numbers. But in their actual life, if they were just a guy with two followers on Jeremy Carr, we wouldn't like him. But that's another story. That is a mess. That is a mess. Right. Question number seven. Who did Messi score his first goal against this season? Oh. Fuck man, I don't remember that shit. Man, it was PSG. The rest, I don't know. A hundred percent wrong. You said breast. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's funny, isn't it? There's a team in France called Breast. Like that's just lit. Right, that is definitely incorrect. The answer is Manchester City. He scored his first goal against Messi. Yes. Oh, lit. Go on, this Messi. Season. Question number eight: Who was the first black person to feature on the cover of French Vogue? Um, 
Bob Marley. Are you are you taking this seriously? Poet? Not really. Like I'm, I'm thinking of French Vogue. Like I will never know. Like I could go say Thierry Henry, but I genuinely have no clue. No clue. I'm trying to think who in France do they care about black people? They don't really care about black people, and they hate North Africans. So who would they find as a compromise? Bob Marley. This is All right, so let me pain- take it serious. I don't. This is so painful. Okay, uh, Rihanna. Right, so we've got Bob Marley and a bit of Rihanna. Incorrect. It was Naomi Campbell. I thought about her as well. But you didn't say it. She went out with Skepta. So lit. Skepta went out with Naomi Campbell. That is so lit. <laughs> like Naomi Campbell. Like that's Naomi Campbell. Richard Blackwood's cousin. This is crazy, bro. Is that Richard Blackwood's cousin? Yeah, I found out when Richard Blackwood had a show on Channel 4. So he had like an um, MTV show called uh, Select. And then he was on, on, he had the Richard Blackwood show on Channel 4 as well. And then he revealed bare stuff. And one of them was like, Naomi Campbell's his cousin. I was like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Crazy, bro. That's crazy. Cool. Let's finish off. Number nine. Name all the features on Lethal Bizzle's Pow 2011 track. Uh, so it starts off with a few men. You're barking out the wrong tree. That's what lights on me. Type 2011 human, track. The 2011 track? Yeah. What, Pow 2? 2011. I even helped you there. See? I even... See? I'm so, I feel sorry. I even helped no, you No, because Pow came out in like 2000 and... God knows what. If they're saying Pow 2, then it's a different conversation. If they're saying Pow... That version, like Kano's on it. Wait, what, what version? You have to be very specific here. 2011. 2011. Fuck. So Jamie, Kano. Man, I shouldn't have drank. <laughs> Leaf will be. Power's like one of the greatest songs of all time. But this video version gets Chip. Oh fuck! Who else is on it? I mean Wiley. Oh, who else is on it? I'll give up. That, that's all you. That's all you got for me. Cause did no one listen to that version. We listened to the version that came out, and we might have even listened to Power Two, which is like a version didn't have in a video. Right. So we haven't got the complete answer. No. So it's incorrect. Who else so, on it? So the answer is JME. Yeah. Wiley. Yeah. Chipmunk. Yeah. Face. P Money. Gets. Kano. Oh, how can I forget P Money and Face? That's a fucking stinker. <laughs> Can I just say, P Money and Face are the reasons why I always work in the community as well, man. Those are two, like, especially P Money, bro. Like, do you know how much contribution she's made to Grant? Do you know how incredible P Money is? He's such an important person. And Face, oh my lord. Who's that nigga? Come on, man. Anyway, it's my bad. I forgot. Final question What is the title of rapper Backroads G, Back G's breakout song? What is it again? Fuck, I'm never drinking like this again, bro. Why are you blaming the drink? I told you to slow down. <sighs> I know, man. Fuck, <laughs> man. Because there's Back Row G song that, there's a Back Row G song that made him pick, like, popular. And there's a Back Row G song that made me like him, which is my family with Pasalu. That's what I really care about. So I give up. I'm drunk. Okay, we've got no answer. Because Poet is drunk and disorientated. Proper. The answer is Party Popper. Feet ambush and Paisalu. Paisalu. Okay. I ambush, shower ambush as well, my Can brother, I just say, man. That was not very good. You've got three all. out of ten. Seriously. Three out of ten. Which I'm surprised about. I thought you I thought you were gonna give us intellectual. But like I told you, man, I know what I know and I'm ignorant to what I don't. And I literally just stay where I know. And you run with it. I like that. At least you're honest. Anyways, we've got three out of ten for Pro It, which is, <laughs> is not great. <laughs> it's not great. We're going to have a Sorry, leaderboard Jay. that comes up and you're going to be very much at the bottom. Serious? Yeah, man. But I prefer bottoms anyway. Girls, that is. Yeah, that was all, that was all, that was almost about to... Yeah, but obviously, I'm you, a, I'm a RN. I'm a real yeah. nigga, man. So, like, <laughs> real niggas recognise people that want to troll. They do the trolling thing, man. I ain't got nothing to prove. <laughs> Cocktails and takeaways. Okay, cool. 
so we are going to play a game. It's called Song Association. Sweet. So in this game, your goal is to sing a song containing words that have been given to you as quickly as possible. Go. Easy peasy. Cool. So first word is love. Ooh, where do I go? Love. Never knew what I was missing. Ooh. Then I know when we start kissing I found out I Keisha Cole So that's a Cole. Keisha Cole oh, I love that I love this okay. Keisha Cole Okay, number two Friend Oh baby you Got what I need Hey, but and you, you say, say I'm just a friend Say I'm just a friend I'm just a or, friend Brandy was a really good option But I decided not to go with it Do you know what? I love Mario I love Mario. It's so sick. You see, back in the day when I wasn't too cute, that was the song I used to sing. Whatever. Everyone used to friend zone me. I can look at your face. You've always been cute. No, I wasn't. Least. Believe me, they man didn't listen to rate me. Man, dark skin, chocolate ass. They didn't listen to rate me. I don't <laughs> feel like you had the confidence. You didn't rate yourself. Whereas now you know you're lit. So it's like, nothing can hold you back. You know, I feel like it's, it's a mixture. It's a mixture. Okay, cool. Are you ready for the round two? It's going to get harder. Go on. Dance. Don't be so quick to walk, walk away. away. Ah, Come and dance, dance with me. I wanna, wanna rock, rock your body. Feel you, babe. Hey, <laughs> Come and dance, dance with me. If you don't have to. Ah, dark with hey, honestly, question. he sold his catalogue for 100 mil. That's really Out upsetting. of order. Out of order. Justin to Blake. It might have been worth a bit more. Our cousin from the cookout. Listen, no, seriously. It might have been worth a bit more. It's definitely worth a bit more. Just a bit. 100 mil, I was like, raw, they got a cheap boy. Justified? Or what's the other album called? Um, I've got it in my phone anyway. I've also got Justified versus. Let me find it quickly. Ain't Future no Sex Love Sounds. Which there one? Is. Wow. I, I, I'm only going to say Justified because um, there's a song called there. I take it from here. I used to listen to it every single day. Track four on the album. So how did the song go? I'm going to take it from here. Mm. Just as sure as the love is sun Every morning, every night Yeah, let me take it here <laughs> I banger. love that Okay, cool We've got the next word The drink caught my ass I couldn't even think of the word, same word We've got the next words mm. Baby Fabulous Can you be my B-A-B-Y So it's a song by Fabulous called Baby um, I don't know this song Don't you? I'll play it I don't you. know this song Listen, don't let um don't let them copyright me. Or, no, or just, just make sure you um I'll copy it out. I like this. I was gonna say a shanty baby, but I wanted to make you happy. So you wanted to I like this. Fabulous. I like baby. this. This is a serenade. For those who serenade. don't know, just type in Spotify, Fabulous um baby, and then just play it whilst we're talking. In the background. In the like, background. Lightly. Softly while you listen to us, SMRS. More or less listen to your voice anyway. Mine's just here as so an associate. Listen. Stop trying to steal my heart. What do you mean? Stop trying to steal my heart. I've got it. <laughs> oh my God. Honestly, you travel. You travel. Let's move on. Okay. We've got round three. Round three? Round three. You want me to find something that has round three? No, this is the round three, so it gets harder in each round. Oh, sugar, got you. So, find me a song that has the word don't. <sighs> don't play with this. Don't be <laughs> silent. <laughs> They're not understanding, understanding this logic. Hey, what? I'm, I'm back, back and I'm better. better. Oh, watch you see that line there? What you more than ever? ever. Listen, no. that song is too good. Bryson. Bryson. That is the only so good song you got, but I love it. No. No, to be honest, okay, let me lie. Let me not, let me be honest. Let me be honest. After that album, I didn't like any of music. After he tweeted that he was going through a mad depression, but he, he, do you know what it is? I jumped back on him when he done songs, a song with Ryan Trey. It's so cold. Do you listen to Ryan Trey? I don't, I don't even know who that is. Um, obviously, you got You're already plugging us on some new tunes, you know. Ryan Trey's got a tune called Nowhere to Run. Oh, I do know this song. <laughs> so, like, I like it, I like it. Bryson's got a couple of Do you know what? I'm looking forward to him. When he comes back and he does big things, I'm waiting for him. But the last couple of stuff he did, I wasn't really feeling it. I definitely understand where you're coming from, fully. Okay, let's go to the next word we've got sexy 
Sexy, can I just pout in your manners? Girl, are you shaking? Got to play it like, oh, it's a cold at moment. Let me go and get my camera. All I want to know is, sexy, can I? Yeah. Ray J. Ray J's my nigga, man. Ray J got the chills, child. You know what? I like that. I love Ray J. Ray J's so underappreciated, but it's mostly because of his crazy behavior. Crazy behavior, crazy relationship with... Is it a crazy relationship, though? With his current girlfriend. Oh yeah. Do you not watch Love and Hip Hop? I stopped watching it after they moved to so he started making these bikes that he sells for like thirty grand, like each one's thirty grand yeah. and making like a hundred and twenty grand off Oh yeah, he's making month. money off tech. He's doing the tech thing now. The he's doing this thing, yeah. But I used to see because he's a bit of a nerd, I used to see the way he used to comply and sort of what's her name again? What's his name of his missus? That he always like just and she's gorgeous. Oh, um Nicki Minaj's ex. Safari. Yeah. Is no, Safari? Safari. Him and Safari always have a weird relationship. Anyway, yeah. Safari's a weird guy, but his actual misses that he have a child with. Oh, um, oh flip God, man. Gonna, anyway, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Basically, it's gonna come to me. Randomly. I just don't like the way she is. Yeah, that that, that relationship is is, a is, mess. is really is really a mess. It's really a mess. A mess. It's like is it ma? Oh, you're getting close. It's not Masika. No, it's not Masika. It's When's the last Wait, is, live, is the new series? Ray, J, Ray J's baby mum is called. Now, someone is saying in the comments because it's going to write my Please, leave brain. a comment last I'm going to remember it randomly. It's going to hit me like a ton of bricks. But yeah, Ray J, big up him, man. He, I, love I don't him. think he. I, don't, I feel like sometimes it's annoying because it's the same thing as people like Bow Wow. That they've done so like that there's so they've done so much for the music industry that because of their personal shit and because they don't carry themselves, people give people, them a play. They don't listen, they don't need to they don't want to give them their awards. But Ray J has done a lot for the music community, come on, the music game, seriously. He's got rhythms out he's there. He's got it's just rhythms. That. He just does stupid stuff. But then he's given the reasons why I won't say the reasons why, but Breakfast Club became big because of Ray J. Oh really? Yeah, so basically Ray J and Fabulous got into a mad altercation. Mm-hmm. And then Ray J phoned up the Breakfast Club, going absolutely mad, and it went viral. And then when that went viral, people recognized that Breakfast Club have the, the the capacity and the relationships to have exclusive interviews where people reveal certain information. Mm-hmm. So it's off the back of that interview that Breakfast Club became so so big. Blew so wow. Ray J deserves his, his he deserves his props. Yeah, give him his I, fucking flowers. Seriously, give he made a flowers. song called "I Hit It First whilst this girl was married in a relationship, like. If you don't rate Ray J, man, I don't know what's wrong with you, man. Nah, no, he's that guy. Nah, he is that guy. Brandy's brother and Jack Harlow only found out the other day. Stinker. Yeah, that one, that one was Let- a bit, that was very rude. But then again, we're in a new generation, man. We're in a whole new game. Like, people- so that, Jack Harlow's white. It's true. He, is he knows everything about country and Western. He knows everything about pop culture. <laughs> he knows everything about ABBA, Dancing Queen. But this, he's so learning. Who the hell is this? Yeah. He's we learning on a job. This. Yeah. Yes, Shout out Jack Harlow. You know I love you. I just want to tease you. You and H, all forever. <laughs> but I've actually got another game with you, and this is a special game that we just created just for you. Serious? Are you enjoying the games? I didn't just join your company, to be honest with you. So wherever you present me, I won't dislike. Listen, you need to stop it. Sorry, baby. Stop it. Sorry. Don't play with you. <laughs> <laughs> right, we have a special game for you. So, yeah. we are calling this the Poetry Slam. Oh, shit. So, the aim of the game, obviously, I know that you, in a past life, and maybe in a present life, and maybe in a future life, used to be a phenomenal artist, or maybe still are a phenomenal artist. I don't know if you still make music. Yeah, so we got a creative collective called Vibar, and we make music through them. It's so dope. I'm not even lying to you. If you type in V I B B A R, it's some of the dopest music. I promise you. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that. But I was listening to some of your your old stuff, and I was like, right, this guy really can spit. Also, you had the poet's corner which i was talking about and i found a very interesting poem that you created in poet's corner that i thought would be so enlightening for me to share today go on so on one of the episodes of poet's corner this is the most phenomenal piece of literature that i feel like i've heard i'm gonna hate this i feel like go on poet's corner slept next to shaniqua woke up next to steve with a weave down to her sleeve. Why is the hair not real? More lies. So you can lie in the bed. So like I was seeing this girl at the time, right? <laughs> and her whole thing, her, she, always, she used to be like, she used to argue me like, keep it real, keep it real. And then one time she's like, keep it real. And I'm like, your nails are not real. Your hair's not real. You wear a push-up bra. Like, all of this shit. So I just kept saying it to her. 
was like, baby, you love this whole keep it real line. Like, so let's live by your principles. By your principles, you hate yourself. Your hair's not real. You bought it. Your nails are not real. You bought them. Like... Like what the fuck Like how can you be so stuck on this But you don't keep anything real yourself So it was mostly like When I was even like Doing Poets Corner And generalising I was speaking about like Two women max <laughs> so, You know that was My oh. number was like Oh bad girl But there's like There's like two you got, Two girls You got them max. two experiences But I do want to challenge you And I do want to um, Exercise your poetic skills Go true So the aim of the game is to come up with the next verse in the line I give you. Cool. Your verse must rhyme with the given prompt and you have five seconds to think. Shit. Do I say it after the five seconds or do I say it within the five second prompt? You promo? can say it after the five seconds. Go. Are you ready? Let's go. Number one. Mm-hmm. Sitting at the bus with nothing to do. Who gives a shit because I'm chilling with you? <laughs> Alright, number two Dancing in the club to my favourite track And it feels even better Because I'm looking at your back <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm going to give you that Never worry about what a next man said Because it doesn't matter what he said I'm still in these bitches' bed <laughs> Okay, cool Cool, you just You just You just You just hate these things right now, child Come on Cool I don't know what she got in those jeans. But she's impressed by what I'm wearing because I'm an educated nigga. I wear trousers with seams. Do you know what? I fucking like that. Come on, my I like that. Spud me as well. Come on. Do you know what? I like that. He got the seams on the jeans, sure. Seams are expensive because you got to maintain that shit. I like that. Okay, number five. If it's not about money, don't call my phone. Cause I'd rather just chill out But in a spliff Whilst I'm home alone I like that one as well That yeah. one is That one was off the dome guys This is off the Come dome on. Always be grateful For the things you got Cause when I started In this thing I didn't have a lot I like that Do you know You're very good This is the I like this game you know Yeah You're giving us real talent Come on Okay We got a couple more you want to get with me, you know I can tell. So I'll just do this whole magician thing and just put you under a spell. Trying to put me under a spell? Come on. Trying to spell me? Trying to put some magic on me? Yeah, I'm trying to spell you like I know your name. Purr! It is too much. Okay, number eight. Can't talk bad, I'll put you in place. Like you don't know your address because I can tell you got bad taste. Okay. I like that. We got one more. Go on. One final one. Feeling kind of thirsty, I might go grab some wine. And True say you shouldn't be here because it's past 10 o'clock. So you know the time. <laughs> Did you make pause this one? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? Why thank I'm you. I'm gonna clap for you. No, that was so <laughs> good. Are you ever gonna come back with to music like as poet? All right. I really like you. Let me play you something. You're gonna play us an exclusive. Yeah. Who's this? I like that. Oh shit. <laughs> That was, so, we had a bit of a flow change there. Like, I want more. Like, you're finna give me more. No, that's amazing. So, is this actually, is this, are you playing around or are you actually gonna drop something? Yeah, so, like, um, one thing in my work I hate to do is put my name associated with anything because I don't want my name to be associated with anything. I like family oriented things. So, like, the podcast is called HC and, like, Filthy Fellas is Filthy Fellas. And, like, even Gasworks was Gasworks before it's Poet in our hand. And, I just don't like putting my name to stuff. I'd rather people feel included in something so we all like, we feel like we're a team in it. Like mm-hmm. if someone's name's the thing, you don't feel like you're part of the team. You feel like you're working for that guy. So that's yeah. a bit rubbish. So like with my career, with the collective now, it's called Vibar. And there's like loads of people involved in our project that we got coming out at the end of the year. We've got like Getz, RV, D-Double on it, Airborne, 
Um, I'm speaking to Nux. I think we're going to get Nux in studio. So we've got like loads of people to be a part of it. I love so. that. I'm so excited. And again, like you are one of the, I would say the genesis of UK grime, like definitely in terms of channel you in terms yeah, of yeah, like yeah. The, the, the real beginning of when UK grime became a thing on TV and things like that. It's, it's not really my generation. No, I hear you. It's but that's not, not even generation. the music we make now. We yeah. don't make that type of music. But like. you, you're, you're, you're giving us the new sound. You're yeah. giving us You're giving us poet, but poet with experience. Adult poet, daddy poet. Daddy poet, yeah. Do you know what it is? I just like to make cool, chill back music where people can just sit down in their house and hoover, I don't know, <laughs> chat to their, get their partner, I don't know, whatever, man. And just have like a really, I don't like to, it's so crazy. I do this to be the center of attention, but I don't like being center of attention. So if in music, I would rather have something that blends in rather than stands out. So a lot of our music is like music that you can play in various different environments and doesn't make you feel uncomfortable. It just makes you feel like, oh, this is kind of cool. Do you know what? I'm really excited to hear that. And thank you for playing this game with me. I thought you didn't really would. I was actually nervous to give this game because I was like, you know what? A lot of people can't can't hit it on the dome. Oh, uh, no, but no, no. You, you know, you... You like this is this is this is not a new thing to you. You got girl, it. You are. Just <laughs> Hot topics of the week, baby. Right, so we are going to move on to hot topics of the week. Of course, it has been a chaotic week and Come we are going to start with our hot new releases. So, of course, we are starting with Netflix Stranger Things season 4 just dropped. Have you watched it? Yes, up to see episode three. I'm halfway through episode three right now. And do, do you know what? When you get to episode four, it's going to spin your mind. This, for me, has been the best, one of the best series of Stranger Things. I don't know who wrote this. I don't know what happened. This season, serious fucking season. Do you know what I rate them, though? A lot of things you watch here, yeah, they keep the same formula, like the person's the same age. Yeah. These people clock that the people that watch Stranger Things have gone through a mad traumatic situation yeah. in their life, COVID, bare other stuff. So we've had to grow up a little bit faster because we were mm -hmm. put in circumstances where we had to grow up quickly. Yeah. And they've just given us, gone from sort of kind of horror, but like, yeah, man, it's kind of for kids, to straight up horror. This you one is horror, grown horror. Up. Yes. This one was I'm horror, here. horror. Yes. I, I don't watch it. horror. I had to watch it at the daytime. I said, I can't do this at night, child. I need to watch this in the 2 p.m. and have time to process before I go to bed at 10. Because there was, I couldn't watch, I could not watch it late at night. There was sometimes I had to watch it, then watch a comedy to balance out my emotions and then go back to it. Because it was that scary. It wasn't scary. It was just very jumpy. And it was just very, nah, this season was so fucking good. I proper like it, you know, you're right. And look, the thing is, I'm up to actually, the second episode, she smacks the fucking, sorry, to, if I've ruined it for anyone, suck your mum. Sm she smacked the skateboard in man's face, yeah? Yeah. Not the skateboard, the roller skate. And I was like, I was happy. As she should. As she should. As she should. But she's got no powers. So I'm like, this is dead. No, Eleven, she come power. back, my nigga. Yeah, you wanted her to just twist her neck a bit. Yeah, like, and dust her against the wall. I found it wall. quite interesting because it's like, you have the dynamic of last season where she's literally a superhero. Everybody loves her because she saved the world and then you're moving to a new city and she's literally the loser. She's the nobody. And she ain't got no powers. And on top of that, people think she's crazy. And she got no powers throughout the whole thing? You finna watch it. Oh. Uh, you finna watch it. I don't want to ruin it for you. But for the majority of it, she has no powers. But, but I, honestly, this was the best fuck it. For me, it will spin your minds. The right, honestly, I think, I'm like, what drugs are people on when they, when they write this shit? Because you know someone wrote this? A Curious. human being wrote this. It makes sense to me. You get a load of twisted individuals in one room. Twisted. We can make some dope shit. This is or tra people insane. that suffer from trauma. This is definitely from trauma. This one, is someone, something deep happened to this right R, uh, because they brought some brilliant shit out of this, mate. Furthermore, you know the magic roundabout. Yes. It was made by people on ketamine. Oh, was it? Facts. I heard that certain things people are taking drugs to to do good writing. Yeah. Because you can't, because then it's like, remember when you do entertainment, you've got to do something that makes everyone go, wow. Yeah. If you do something that makes everyone go, okay. Like you're just giving something to them that's in their day to day. Mm -hmm. We have to make people go, wow. So the ability, this is, the, uh, this is the best way I can describe it. In our job, what we have to do is provide something with vision, not with sight. 
So with sight, everyone sees with vision, it's further on in life. Mm-hmm. So we got to provide something with vision so people go, oh my God, I didn't even know I needed that, but I do. And that's what vision is. So it's a hard I job. I, I feel like writing it. and de- I feel like stuff like that is, there's, there's, there's definitely a spiritual aspect. You need to have some Come sort on. of spiritual foresight Come to on. be able to write this stuff. Like I feel like, in this kind of stuff, there's always elements of truth, but then I'm gonna I'm about to go into my into my spiritual bag, and I need to reel it back, chat. Next hot new release, we got The Lincoln Lawyer on Netflix. What's that? So I believe The Lincoln Lawyer was a movie. It was a movie that came out in the 80s or 90s, and they've re-ramped it into a series that's on Netflix now. So it's about a lawyer who basically disappears for a year and then comes back and picks up a whole bunch of new cases. I watched the whole series and I lo- it's like Laura Norda, Lord, do you ever do you ever watch anything like Laura that? Laura Norda's lit. Like Laura Norda, all those like police dramas, law dramas, um crime crime stuff. Shit. Do you watch any of those? Yeah, I love Laura um that type of stuff. Um but I like when it's re- like real. Like true crime. True crime is lit. And watching YouTube videos of like people that break out of court lit. What do you mean by break out of court? So like there'll be like YouTube videos of individuals that ran out of court. Obviously they got caught afterwards, but like they'll be in court and something will happen and they'll run out. I oh just my love God. It. I just love court. court stuff, legal stuff. I love when the criminals win. Yeah, I'm all for it. I love me some good true crime. I'm all for criminals winning. Really? Yeah. You want the criminals to win? Most criminals, because when you take in, when you take a look at what a crime is, only something that's been recorded, which means that we all are probably guilty of committing crimes where it hasn't been recorded. So for me to look down on the man like that a got murderer, caught, you, you're when we're talking about crime here, we're talking about things like murder, manslaughter. Yeah, but then it's like in all these contexts, most murders I won't rate, but if I know a man murdered an individual because that guy tried to trouble his daughter, like. I'm rating you. God forgive me for saying it, but like, imagine I tell your daughter, though. bro. Okay, that's cool. what I mean. So Scenario. like, I, I watched things I like that. I watched this thing recently. Yeah. There was a man, a doctor, who was very in love with a woman. She was. He was very in love with a woman, and um, she was married. He was married. Mm. She left her husband for him, but he did not leave his wife for her. She wanted to leave the relationship, but the doctor refused her to leave the relationship. So. The woman said she had enough. I want to leave. And he said to her, if you try to leave the relationship, I promise you no man will ever try to touch you again. So at the time of their relationship, he was doing her B12 shots. So you know vitamin B? Mm. So they're injections. They're injectable injections. So he calls her, calls her and says, I need to do this emergency B12 shot for you at the hospital. Can you come down? She says Yes. He injected her with HIV AIDS. True story. The doctor injected her with HIV AIDS and she was confused because when they told her that she contracted HIV AIDS, she went to all her sexual partners and all of them tested positive. So she said, how the fuck did I get HIV AIDS? It was the doctor that gave it to her and they were able to prove it because the doctor earlier had contacted another of his patients who had full-blown AIDS, took the blood from him and transfused it to her. So, poet, with what you are saying, are you telling me, are you still rooting for the criminals? I thought the criminals were the guys that you consider to be bad, not the individuals that paint the picture of being a nice guy and are the actual criminals. <laughs> Fuck them, man. Like this that is what story I mean. was fucking bad. This is what I'm saying to you. Do you know what? Yeah, God forgive me. Violence has to be the answer sometimes. I swear to God. I like, agree. Everyone wants just to be peaceful. I can't lie. You done that to my mom and my sister. I don't mind serving twenty People years. People ain't getting slapped up enough, you know. They're I'll not. serve twenty years. Like you've given my mom or sister AIDS, and you want me to just carry on with life? Like hey. I know some people be like, but you're jeopardizing your opportunities. This guy needs to get his ass kicked, yeah, he fam. Needs to get his ass he needs kicked. to be in a. He needs to be a vegetable, bro. He needs to be a vegetable. He needs to be not aware of what he's doing day yeah. to day and have a carer. <sighs> like I can confidently say that. Fuck these guys, man, and fuck people that are trying to be all PC, politically correct. For who? <laughs> fuck that shit, fam. The queen. <laughs> you trouble any of my family members that are female and give them something that they can't live with day to day. 
I won't be happy. Fucking crazy. When I heard that story, crazy. Jeez. I see a lot of I see a lot of true crime on um like TikTok. Like people like to make these stories, and I'm like, oh, this is too good. Like I'm like, but this is a mess. People actually go through this shit. Did you hear about the doctor? And this is a Netflix series. There was a um, giving everyone use. Yes. Yes. My father. Yes. Our, our father. father. <laughs> our father. Our father. Our father. And I'm without the H, big man. It's O U R. Our father. Our father. He didn't take an hour to do. Oh, that one was so fucked. What color were they? Um. Niggas just don't do this. <laughs> shit. That's what I'm saying. You niggas just don't do this shit. When niggas do crime, you lot make movies about it. It's so predictable. Drug dealers, this, that, cool. When white people do crime, there's an eight year old kid shooting up a cinema or shooting up a fucking school. Then you've or... got some cult of cult of people drinking poison to, to go to the fifth dimension and shit like that. Like these we'll just the most we might do is slap a nigger on stage, Will Smith. <laughs> you man, Jeffrey Epstein. You don't hear no black people doing Jeffrey Epstein. This not that's not our thing. I mean R. Kelly wasn't too true. R. Kelly is not black. <laughs> I don't know what R. Kelly is, cuz. R. Kelly is part of that whole secret society of individuals. That we don't claim. Yeah, we, we definitely... We don't claim Black him. people don't claim R. Kelly, please. R. Kelly. This nigga had a song called Happy People. What person's happy around you, please? I, I would like to know. I would like to know. But yeah. This nigga uh, had a fucking... He had a... See this body woman that you admired of me? Mm-hmm. Imagine I wore this with no clothes underneath. <laughs> this is what he was doing on Aaliyah's front cover of her first album, AJ Nothing But a Number, a song he wrote. And it like, was leather. And it was and leather. It was leather. <laughs> Nigga look like Stone Cold Steve Austin, some fucking wrestler chatting to some 13, 14 year old girl about AJ Nothing But a Number. Your backside, you fucking prick. You and Tim Westwood should go and do a fucking crib session. <laughs> this is mad. I don't get it. AJ number number. I, but what? you know what? Yeah, I can't be, like I can't believe that was. We have to question the society at the time because he's not at been, the time now because he was around for a very long time, and people knew about the Aaliyah thing. People knew about all this stuff. It wasn't until the last three years that people called him out for it. But I guess people were saying that they were calling out for him for years. Yeah, but it wasn't anything that was like. Conviction, conviction based. He didn't get convicted. It was it all conviction based. It's like this, isn't it? Like this is the reasons why it's difficult for me to associate myself with anything industry based. Is because industry is based upon keeping the lights on, and keeping the lights on is based upon money. It has nothing to do with morals and ethics and things that are right. So that means that if your ability to keep the lights on uh, is having a bad effect on the my mom or what, it doesn't matter. Wow. So you have to always admire what God created rather than what man created, because what man created. It's fuckery. What God created is love. I love that. Hopefully. So we are going to move on to the Johnny Depp case with Amber Heard. So Johnny Depp wins the affirmation case against Amber Heard. Like, I've been trying to avoid this thing for a long time, you know. Why? Because it was such a... Because it was... Every week there was a new thing. Mm. So I wanted to wait, sh- make sure that it ended before I have a conversation about it with yeah, somebody. That makes sense. Because every week something happened new. Yeah. So for those that you don't know, fact foul. So a year since their marriage in 2015, Heard had filed a restraining order against Dept, alleging that he was verbally and physically abusive, claiming he threw a phone at her and requests he takes anger management classes for a year, but the judge denied. So then they filed for a divorce. 2017, the divorce is finalized. Then in 2019, Depp sues Heard for defamation came in the an article that Heard wrote saying that basically talking about him being a domestic abuser, um, gained positive was used to gain positive press against her for herself. Yeah. So, yeah. Depp also claimed that she is not a victim of domestic abuse, but instead the perpetrator and seeks fifty million dollars in damages. So that's how the whole thing kicked off. I rate him. You rate him? Yeah, ma'am. I rate him. I want to maybe a little bit tipsy, but I can tell you straight, like, I've been in relationships with a girl who's just full of shit, bro. And if she ever presented her situation to the public, people will go, hey, it's not the case, bro. It's not the case. Mm -hmm. It's not the case. So it's nice to know that, because you know what? And I say this not because of, like, 
guys I say it more because of girls there are actually girls going through real like females going through real situations where they are actual victims and they need help yeah and if more individuals come across chatty shit all of a sudden that situation that of need of real help gets confused with arseholes and it's like that situation so bad we only need to have the most honest individuals within that community so we can try and help them the moment you implement an arsehole it confuses things mm -hmm. Amber's an arsehole I'm not saying she wasn't you know a victim to something but to a certain extent she clearly was a perpetrator as well so when you're an antagonist the last thing you need to talk about is being a victim you kind of need to go hey I was a bit fucked up let me just chill out and then be good and if I'm good what bad happens if bad happens when I'm good fair enough but so you're saying you're, you're team Johnny at the moment I'm team truth man you're team truth I'm just team truth I think for me I can't I have to be very impartial because I don't know information and I think that's the most annoying thing about people people would take one element of, of the truth and run with it but this was a very very long winded case and I feel like mm. for anyone to have a, a constructive opinion you have to know all the details that's the first thing I would say so I'm gonna I'm not gonna sit here and sit here and say that I'm team this or team that because I don't know enough and I didn't sit down and watch every single detail of the case to, to commit a verdict what I do know is that Johnny Depp won the case but I do believe there was both foul, there was foul play on both parties 100% 100% what I'll say to people that have been in relationships, though, is this. Trust me, man. Trust me. Trust me. Guys out there, because i got to defend the guys out there. Everyone's got to defend their team. I defend everyone. But I will say to you, guys, I looked at Amber and my stomach turned. My, my, my wow. soul didn't feel right. I'm telling you, guys, I understand girls are pretty. I understand girls are nice. And I understand girls might even cover up some insecurities that you have for the temporary brothers. You see any girl that's a tramp, drop them out. Stop <laughs> housing these girls that are tramps, bro. I agree. You're housing a girl, and when she goes wrong, your whole perception on females is wrong because you house the tramp. You're the fucking prick, bro. Mm -hmm. Just because your girl got shit up in Dubai doesn't mean every girl gets shit up in Dubai. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, It definitely highlighted for me the importance of conversations of... Uh, men going through domestic abuse and I feel like it was quite strong of Johnny to admit that him as a man has gone through domestic abuse because that's something that we don't talk about and that's something in the men community that's not being spoken about because a lot of guys are getting whacked up a lot of guys are getting their <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> a lot of guys nah, are getting whacked man, up let's call, a, nah, let's call it true a lot of guys are getting slapped up but they're just they're firming it they're not saying anything because what kind of conversation can you have with your friend and you're telling your friend that oh yeah my girl's slapping me up at home you don't like do you know what it's demasculizing be, do you know what I mean be honest man my girl slapped me in the face I didn't do shit my girl slapped me in the face bare times I just don't do shit because for the simple fact for me I ain't slapping no girl fuck all that man that's all I'm not slapping no girl if you want to slap me fair enough it's up to me to get myself out of that situation I ain't trying to be no victim but at the same time I ain't trying to make no girl no victim to my physical abuse that's long I'm much stronger than a girl so well, I would How say much stronger but. no one should slap anybody how that's, about that? That's like, idealistic just, though, isn't it? I don't but feel like, this, this is the thing, like I feel like when it comes to um, men and domestic abuse, a lot of women take that into consideration that a lot of men have been brought up and they're saying don't hit a woman, don't hit a woman. But they're then, because of that conditioning that they've had, when they're in violent situations, they just stand there and do nothing. And what does that, that allow the perpetrator to do? Do it again, do it more. No, just walk away. Like, it's, it's a I'll be real, bro. other guys won't tell the truth. A girl's hit me in the face multiple times, G. Not like I'm a girl that you were seeing. Yeah, and it's just like if I'm gonna stay in this because you can't you, niggas can say what they want. I'm not gonna hit the girl back if that makes me an Egypt or whatever. I don't mm -hmm. mind. I'm not hitting no girl back. But what I will do is say to that girl, I'm out. Yeah. Like what the fuck is going on here? I can't hit you back. I've got a mum. I've got a sister. Like I plan to hopefully one day have the privilege of being a father to a female. I don't want to encourage them to thinking that a guy who is physically born stronger than a female has the capacity to hit her. No. But what I do say to guys is, if a girl's hitting you, fam, if you want to be a victim, you're just a dickhead, fam. You've got a 2002 Craig David born to do this. Walk the fuck away. <laughs> you can't hit her. I get that. But you don't have to stand there and just take it. Mm -hmm. You don't love yourself, cuz. That's your Egypt, bro. That's me anyway. I think you're at Egypt. You're an absolute Egypt, bro. And some people might be that's a little bit harsh. Possibly. But you are an Egypt. Amongst being other things, Egypt is also what I believe you are. Don't get hit by no fucking no, anyone. No, true. I agree. I don't feel like anyone should hit anyone. And again, um, in, on the flip side, a lot of people are Team Amber and feel like it has been a disservice to women um, who are in domestic abuse situations and are coming out and, and do want to come out to speak about um, their domestic situation, which I hear. 
I oh, hear that as well. People. That's just white people problems, man. I don't, I don't know. What <laughs> Black women be going through domestic. Like, that's what I'm saying. It, I mean, it, it's something that can apply to all races. No, of course. But you know when, like, there's... Like, this is what I say to you. I only I really understand my tribe. When my tribe talks about, like, abuse and so on and so forth, it's so, like, relative to... Like, there's certain abuse that happens within uh, Caribbean households. Mm-hmm. But when someone says it, they're like, oh, my God, my family went through that, so on and so forth. It's very relative. So you end up going, this is a common trait within, unfortunately, I'm not happy with it. It's a common trait within Caribbean households or this mm-hmm. and that, so on and so forth. Yeah. When it comes to Caucasians, I don't know what they go through. So I'm like, you lot, go sort that out. I go you sort out this thing. Good luck to, uh, to Good all luck of to you. you lot, fam. Mm-hmm. Not only do you call, you know, I'm sure that you have to house problems but you housed problems with us so let me go sort out my issues you sort out your issues I'll meet I you will like, meet in the middle yeah, yeah we'll, we'll meet, meet to in the discuss. middle we'll meet to discuss because you caused <laughs> us problems you're causing yourself problems big man we didn't like we just gotta sort this shit out so let's just sort this shit out and then we'll come back moral to moral of the story in the in the eyes of the law Johnny Depp is guilty I mean Johnny Depp is innocent and Amber Heard is guilty and now she owes a whole fuck off a lot of money good man the defamation case from good. what I heard it's very difficult to prove a, a defamation case so the fact that they won is fucking crazy good um, but yeah man I feel like this should be a lesson to everybody guys go through shit and to the women that are going through domestic violence it doesn't mean that you aren't heard it just means that in this system, in this instance there was evidence that proved against what my girl said so I do believe she slapped him up too I'm not gonna lie her name's From Amber. Chopping up, the, chopping up, chopping up the finger and that. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I think that was foul play on both of them, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. Who the hell wants to be Amber? Amber's in between. You're either stopping or you're going. All this in between business, man. Bad man, I ain't that. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, guys, we are gonna close because we've had a crazy, crazy, fun-filled episode. But I want to say thank you so much to Mr. Poet for coming. And where do we find you? at my house but if you're not able to come around I would advise <laughs> you go on Poets Corner UK that's on what is that on Instagram Twitter even email to her and then one poll please on TikTok not that I use it not that I imagine you can contact me on it but just because you might care that it's there thank you so much for coming I really really love and appreciate you and thank you guys for tuning in but that has been the Cocktails and Takeaways this week and of course we'll be back next week with another bad boy or another bad girl in the meanwhile fuck off (laughs) 